Okay, welcome everybody. This is Instant Customers Weekly Webinar, episode 004. I am Rick Dilliot. I am the Senior Support Manager for Instant Customer. With me today is all things Instant Customer Marketing related, Gene Scally. Hey everybody. Thanks for hanging with us while we got this all straightened out. Thank you very much. So for those of you who are maybe new to Instant Customer or um, want to know a little bit more about it. It is the fastest, easiest way to build a list, sell your books, products, services, make money, and build an intimate, authentic relationship with your prospects and customers on autopilot if you do it correctly. Right, Gene? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially that last part. <laughs> Especially the last part. Now, if you have never tried it, you can now uh, get uh, access to Instant Customer, you can get it now at instantcustomer.com slash get secret. So for those of you who have not tried it out there, this is your chance. Gina, who is Instant Customer for a little more specifically? There. Okay, I see is for smart small business owners, authors, experts, speakers, consultants, service professionals, basically Rick, anybody who has a business or wants to help anybody who has a business. Right, the point being any business right now knows how hard it is with traditional marketing techniques and the way to go now, use any means at your disposal to build your own list and market directly to your own list. Your return on investment with that is much, much greater than any, any traditional uh, marketing you can do right now. Okay, what you'll discover on today's webcast, you're going to learn from the IC pros, Gene and myself. You are going to learn today, our frequently asked questions section is going to be on using sound files in Instant Customer. We're going to take as many of your questions as we can, and we will give you some special offers at the end to try other products that we are connected with. Now before we begin, this, re this uh, broadcast is being recorded, and we will have a replay up as soon as we can. Um, replays are, uh, links to the replays are available in your instant customer inbox. That's when you first log in, very bottom of the page, there's an inbox uh, that's got all kind of stuff in there. It could have, Gene, I mean, if you, you know, are part of a, a package deal, your deliverables are being there. Uh, that also has updates and, in this case, uh, links to the webinars. Yes, please always check your inbox. There's always good information, um, sometimes emergency information. If we're having any kind of system issues, we'll put something in there. Uh, it's always the best place to go first for information. Yeah, I definitely think people should get more used to using that. Now, you can put questions in the, in the uh, question box today. Uh, in general, we will, uh, it, this goes to what makes a good question. Uh, we're going to try to keep questions as that, you know, that are pertinent to the subject that we're talking about at the time we're talking about it. At the end of the broadcast, if we have enough time, we'll get to kind of more general questions. Uh, again, if we can, a lot of times we'll use those questions as material for future broadcasts. So definitely, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say when you when you put a question in, the best way to do your questions is to put a complete question because we frequently end up with questions out of order. So if you could let us know exactly what you're asking instead of just referring to something on the slide, because we may have gone past that slide before we address the questions, it would really help everybody out. Absolutely. Okay, this uh, tip of the week for this week uh, is QR codes. QR codes are an easy way to. Get people into your campaign. Get, get people into your campaigns by pre-formatting either a link to a website or an SMS message um, to, a, to really make it as easy as possible for them to opt in. What are the best, uh, so what are the best uses that uh, you've seen or you've used before? Um, so I use QR codes to do all kinds of things. Uh, when I'm trying to send, for example, a code uh, or a keyword to a short code, or if I'm trying to get somebody to send me a special message along with that first initial SMS, it's easier to do it with a with a QR code because they can just scan it and press send and they're done. Um, I'm using it uh, this week. One of my clients is using it to get people um, 
to go to a lead capture page uh, for a contest that they're doing at a trade show and they've printed the QR codes on t-shirts that everybody in the booth is wearing and they find that while they're out getting lunch or while they're getting a cup of coffee at the convention center people are scanning their backs which is really funny and they're loving it. Great. Uh, we will be doing uh, more advanced stuff on QR codes uh, as we go. And yeah, I think that's going to be an entire entire broadcast. Yeah, I think so too. To, to my mind, the biggest problem people have is misunderstanding you know, what they actually do. I think they expect them kind of to do more than they actually do. So they're really yeah. just a simple way to, to, to direct somebody. Absolutely. It's, it's a QR code is just a, an encoded um, direction to get somebody to do something like go to a website or dial a phone or send a text, a specific text message. Right. Yeah, I think people just get a little nutty with it and see all those little things and think they're kind of magical or something. They're really not. Okay, uh, Gene, what can you tell us about uh, this week's Hero of the Week? Oh, Hero of the Week this week is Christy Chase. Now, I found Christy in uh, the Mojo University honor roll, and I apologize that it's a small picture and a little bit fuzzy. I pulled it straight out of there. But Christy had reported on something that I thought was really awesome. And uh, here's what I wanted to let everybody know. Christy said in her story that she was really new to, me to marketing and new to social media. She hadn't had much, if any, experience before at all. And uh, within a very short period of getting uh, Instant Customer and Mojo, um, she had two campaigns that she had sold, um, actually six campaigns, but two customers. One was a fashion show producer and one was a martial arts performer. And what I like about Christie's story, and we see a lot of people always asking, how do I charge for this or how much do I charge for this? And Christie took a very unique approach. For the fashion show producer, she built them three campaigns and her take on this was 10% of their gross. Um, and she's doing quite well with this. And with a martial arts performer, she set up three campaigns for the martial arts performer and she charged a setup fee, so a, an upfront fee, and then uh, per lead revenue. So what that is is, for example, you might say to somebody, I am going to charge you $1,000 to set it up and then I'm going to charge you $2 for every lead that I get for you. And I thought it was just um, brilliantly creative and a great way to capitalize. Um, she'd done it in a really short period of time. She had done it, I believe, in less than a month from when she started using Instant Customer and uh, well on her way to a lot of success. So I wanted to call out uh, Christy and tell her a good show. Fantastic job, Christy. Um, Jean, uh, just, a re just real quick, uh, what's your, do you have any much experience with per lead uh, campaigns? I don't think... I tend not to do mine. I, I tend not to do mine per lead. Although um, I am working on uh, two campaigns now. One will include a per lead charge, and one will include a percentage of sales. Um, and so here's my take on this: If it's a low ticket item that the person you're helping is selling, um, a per lead charge might be tougher to justify. But if you're doing something like selling yachts or selling houses or land, I think a per lead charge is a pretty darn good way to capitalize on it. And when I say capitalize, I mean you know it's, it's a fair um, exchange. If you're bringing a, a person to the business and that person is worth hundred thousand dollars I think a per lead charge is a pretty good uh, a, a good deal so just you know, the, I mean the important thing there is using our system in order to prove that that lead came in through you yeah absolutely because you'll have uh, the name and address the phone number you know as much information as you collect but you'll be able to show who came in from you and you'll be able to give them a list yeah that's that's the whole point of the I'm not sure it's um, well, I mean, it's important even for a two dollars lead or anything lead, but that's just yeah. something that you've got to figure out beforehand and see what's see what's best. Would you consider that a foot in the door technique to to do more, or would that would be a long term strategy? I think that's a long term strategy. I think a per lead revenue um, shows that you're going that you're invested in the process and that you're going to be bringing in them leads that are somehow qualified. Um, you know, you can't just give them a thousand leads that won't ever buy their business, right? You need to somehow qualify those leads to justify, in my opinion, uh, per lead revenue. Okay, great. Thank you. 
All right, so we're going to move on to the FAQ portion of the webcast. And again, this is on using voice files in Instant Customer. Now, how can you use voice? How do you use? Uh, well, there's really only two ways to do it. Two ways uh, to use voice in Instant Customer, right? Um, dial in recorded messages, which is like a greeting, and uh, outbound messages, which is like a voicemail. Exactly right. So there's incoming and outgoing. Obviously, two completely different uh, things, but really, we give you the same way to get those into the system and then right. uh, work with those. So, first of all, uh, how do you record your greeting? We give you a couple of different ways. Um, really, we give you a lot of different ways to record and get them in the system. Now, uh, understand that all of these ways are not made equal. They're for different circumstances. There's best practices, and then there's kind of emergency on the fly practices. So let's take a look at some of those. The best way definitely to record your message is locally on your computer. A number of ways to, diff to do this from professional uh, kind of uh, programs to free ones. Now I and a lot of other people use uh, the free program called Audacity. And you can get that at audacity dot, I think source, sourceforge.net, but just Google it. Um, I really consider this the best way. It allows you to, and I'll bring it up real quick here. We have a little copy of Audacity. And the reason to do this is you can record the message um, and then edit it, replay it. In just a, in, as much as anything, Gene, I think listening to your own messages, getting them till they sound the way you want to, getting a chance to practice not only saying them but hearing them back as well I think is really important um, why don't you talk a little bit about you know tone in messages and yeah so the important thing about uh, there's two parts that I consider critical in any recorded message the first is that you want to try to get the best um, sounding message that you can now recognize when you're using these messages if they're going direct to voicemail it's going to sound like somebody's calling over the phone so um, Rick brought up a really interesting point earlier if, if you're recording in Michael Jackson's sound studio um, don't be disappointed when it comes out sounding like it was a telephone call um, that's what happens when you leave a message direct to voicemail um, if you're recording a, a message that somebody's call going to call in and listen to um, again a good clear crisp sound is essential um, but it's somebody's going to be calling in probably from a cell phone so they're going to have a little bit of grit in that in that call as well um, most importantly Rick started to point out um, the best part of the message or the part that will engage people the most is by having content that is um, interesting um, engaging uh, having a voice that's upbeat and exciting and really talking as if you're talking to your best friend on the phone and you're giving them you know the info the 411 um, so I think that's a critical part of, of messaging yeah I totally agree but I, and I've been you know, I've been with instant customer for over a year and a half now and I've seen Mike do this on numerous occasions and clearly what works is you know, for the incoming voice message, yeah, that should definitely sound like a recorded message that, uh, you know, you would get when you call in. It needs to be fairly professional, and it needs to give the directions. Now, for the, for the incoming greeting, you know, you've got to know that uh, people need to press 2 and leave their name and email address. That's the whole point of what we're doing here is building the list. So people call in, you know, usually want to start off that voice greeting with something like, you know, hi, this is Rick, you know, Press two to get my report because you figure you've you've given them some directions to get it here in the first place. They're not they're usually not calling cold, so you could say you know something like you know press two, leave your name and email, and we'll send you my report right away. That's kind of how the you know the commercial that Tony Robbins and Chet Holmes do that you hear on the radio all the time, um, and they do and then you know it's a it's a whole action taking thing. So after given quick directions. You know, you definitely want, you know, your whole point is to get them at some point in the message to press 2 and leave their name and email. That's the reason why you're having them call in. So, right. you know, that's definitely on the one side. On the other side, for the outbound messages, you are absolutely correct. I've seen Mike do it a hundred times. Um, and he literally records those, you know, as if he's on the spot talking to you directly. You know, you just don't use names because when people, you know, when those... Uh, when the uh, direct-to-voicemail messages come in, 
if they do sound like you actually just called them and left a message, they're a hundred times more effective. Yeah, and you know, Rick, you just touched on something I'd forgotten about that's important to mention. Um, I had somebody call and ask, you know, how do I get the message to say the person's name? And you don't. You make a generic message if you're doing an outbound autoresponder message. You make a generic message um, that just says, like, you know, hey, it's Gene, and I, I just ran into you, and it was great talking with you. Just wanted you to know um, this is what I do for business, and I'll give you a call later in the week so we can reconnect. Something like that. Something very Something generic, like, very yeah, high level. That's... But when somebody gets it, they think, like, oh, wow, she just called and I missed the call. Yeah, or something really conversational. I mean, I hear, I, I hear totally some of them where people are almost doing them like spam. No, don't do it. it yeah. <laughs> but again, the, it... The, point, the point, back to the point of why you would record this on your computer locally is so that you can hear and get the right tone, get mm -hmm. it edited, get kind of the, you know, some of the jitters out of the way so you can practice a little bit. Um, Practicing but, is good. Yeah, I think that's why the, the. I mean, that's why I really recommend to to do it on your computer. Now, that is definitely not the only way you can do it because we realize, and Mike, you know, I, is all the time. Mike will be at an event and he'll want to do something like this, especially for the outbound messages. But I've seen him do it. I've seen him create campaigns on the fly with a laptop, you know, right there, and mm -hmm. and want to record the voice greeting too. Uh, you can dial into the system. I will. I'll, Actually, I could bring that up uh, right now. Or do you want to, do you want to just go through these and I'll demonstrate? Because we do have. Yeah, to let's just go through these quick and then we can demonstrate both how to record and how to attach it to a, exactly. a message. Yeah, I did want to address some of that stuff on the on, on why the locally is better. And then really, mm -hmm. once you once you record that locally, you just upload it to the system. Uh, you can dial into the system. So this is a really quick way to do it. If you can't do it on your computer, if you don't know how, if you know you really are spending too much time trying to figure out how to use a recording program, you know, just practice it. You can call into the system and you can just, you know, you just use the phone and leave a message uh, and it'll go right into your media files and then you can go into your campaign and, and load that. Uh, you know, the downsides, obviously, you cannot edit the message. You really can't hear it until you, after you go back in and do it. It does take a little while. Um, the quality I don't think the quality is a big, huge deal here again because people are accessing it over the phone. You know, you're not going to get stereo, Dolby, whatever quality on any of these things. Nor really do you want it. Um, uh, but that is definitely an option. You can just dial, dial in, and do it. You can also use our teleprompter. We have a recording system inside your campaign that you could just record it right there. It's got a teleprompter. You can cut and paste. You can copy and paste your text into it. I'm going to demonstrate that in a little bit. Um, I still think recording it on your computer right now is a little bit cleaner, but the teleprompter is a really cool feature that we've added uh, into YC that was never in any of our uh, other versions there. Okay, setting up your dial-in messages or your voice greeting. Um, you, uh, uh, no, this wasn't voice greeting. This is. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, my mistake. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So this is the, the voice. I know. I was one way. slide ahead in my mind. I'm sorry. Yep. I know. Uh, you're just too quick for us. Okay. So when people dial in, that is considered an opt-in channel. So the, when you run through any of the template wizards, it will put our default. We have a default uh, file now that um, you know gives basic instructions. Really basic. If you're stuck and you make it, and that's just so that, you know, if you're stuck and you make a campaign, it'll just work right out of the box. That's that's the point of a lot of what we're trying to do. Um, but, of course, you're going to want to go in and customize that. So, really, you're just going to edit your campaign, go to opt-in channels, and then go to greeting. And I think this at this point I should just bring this up uh, because that is... I like the slide, but it is, I think it's going to be too hard to see. Okay, so I'm get my, my stuff back here. So here's my, here's my, you know, basic account. Again, here's the inbox that I was talking about before. 
And just to show you some of the stuff, and here's the Q&A replay links. So that just goes to a page where you can link to episodes one through three in another day or two, you'll be able to get all four. In this case, I'm just going to go to my campaigns. For any of you that are having a hard time getting started or you know, find some of the templates confusing, we made an easy start template that I really recommend you start with to get your feet and really figure out how to get the basics down. And then you can always add more complicated things. You can always edit campaigns. You can always add more messages. You can always add interactive. But uh, I think getting your getting the basics under your belt is a really, really important thing to do. So I'm just going to go to my Easy Start campaign here. I'm going to, and it, if you take a look at the dashboard here, it shows you the uh, file that you have loaded right now. So this, if, I don't know if you can see at the bottom here of my uh, browser, but that's got, it's the super global greeting, meaning that's the default greeting for the system. So if we did want to change that, we're just going to go to edit. and opt-in channels and over to greeting. You can see here you could click and listen to the default greeting there just to see which one is loaded right now and if you want to replace it really all you have to do is click on and you've got a bunch of different options. So you can upload a file directly from your computer, you can record it using the teleprompter, you can even email these files in, now that really comes into play. If you're out in an event somewhere, you can record it onto your Android or your iPhone, and you can just send it in right here to, you know, whatever, it's a media dash, your account number. Yeah, it's actually the account number at instantcustomer.com, and that'll put it uh, directly into your media files. So if you wanted to upload the file from your computer, just check here. You can browse your computer and add the file just like you would any other web-based program. You can choose any existing file that's already uh, in your, any, any audio file that's already in your media files. And there's also, you know, there are actually a bunch from one of our older systems here, that were filler for uh, TELUS seminars. So, I mean, if you find a use for those, absolutely use those. But otherwise, your files are going to be, uh, you know, whatever you named them at the time. And I'll actually go over renaming those in a little bit as well. Uh, but um, let's see, is, uh, what do you think? Is this a good time to show the insert reporter gene, or you want to? Yeah, that's not, that's good, Rick. Okay. So the other, so like I said, if you if you recorded from Audacity and it was on your computer, you would just upload it here. If you already had it loaded into your media files, you just select it here. But if you wanted to record it directly here, you can launch the instant recorder. So we'll do a little instant recorder training here. So this is the instant recorder. It is basically a teleprompter with a record setting. One thing you do need to know, it is a flash-based program. So if your browser or your operating system doesn't deal well with flash, it's uh, not an option for you. Uh, I actually have some text ready already. So the way you would do this is, you, and uh, again, all throughout our system, we use you know, some basic uh, coding Latin language just to show you that there's something there that you need to replace, but that's where it goes. So here in this case, I'm just going to edit my text. I'm going to go grab a bunch of uh, just uh, a text file that I saved from a Winston Churchill speech, actually. Going to, and really all you have to do is just take it straight in and go back to the teleprompter. It'll show up right there. You can change the font size depending on where you're standing or what your um, eyesight level is. You can even change the uh, contrast there. And if you have a lot of text, you can actually control the speed of how fast it scrolls. So this little play button actually starts the scroller 
but this is what would actually start the recording. So typically I would start the recording and then start the uh, scroller afterward, but this also gives you a chance to practice as this counter will move if you play there. So it does kind of uh, play a little havoc here when I'm doing a, when we're doing a webinar because the uh, media settings get kind of um, messed up because we're trying to do uh, too many things at once. But uh, this basically brings up a kind of a, a plug-in here that you do have to make sure that your hardware is enabled and that you have the correct, you're using the correct microphone uh, where the camera obviously doesn't matter here. But if you've got more, because like right now I have a headset and a microphone and my computer has its own microphone, so you just always want to make sure you're using the right stuff. And then you know, really you just have to close that and then you have to make sure that you're allowing uh, access, you're allowing the plug-in access to your media uh, recording stuff. And then that will, uh, you'll, you'll have to wait just a little bit. You'll get a little prompt that says, okay, start recording. It does, there is a little bit of a delay there. So, uh, you know, just make sure that you give it a little time and you follow the prompts when you're using this. When this is done, it will bring up a little pop-up that says, okay, your file is being processed. And then that'll take you right back to, uh, right back to your campaign. And it will actually show up in the drop-down box here as the default there. So, a little test there. At that point, you just definitely want to save and exit. And then that would be the file that is, if you take a look down here, that has definitely changed there. You know, if you click on it, you will definitely be able to uh, listen to your file. So that is uh, the exact way how you set your voice greeting up. I'm going to take a quick peek and see if we have any questions there. Yeah, I am sorry, I cannot demo the recording just because there's all kind of conflicts in the sound between the webinar program and that. But um, I'll tell you what we will do, we will um, we'll just record a demo and we'll, we'll attach that to, or put an extra link in there for the replay. Uh, this recording for the message clients were here when they call. Yes, absolutely. When they call, that's exactly what we were just going over there, Tisa. Um, when people call into the campaign, that's the incoming voice greeting that they would hear. Um, Peter's asking if there's a Mac program. I don't know. Gene, does uh, Audacity work for Mac? Or we lost Gene. I think Gene has another thing to do there. I'll try to find out for that. Um, to go back to, let me see if there's any other questions in here I can get right now. A lot of questions I don't have. Okay, I'm going to move on to setting up outbound messaging. So this is using the direct voicemail uh, service that we have. Now there's a you know. Plenty of things that I'm going to talk about on uh, the challenging side of that, but just know that you know the deliverability on the voicemail isn't as you know quite as good as some of the other ones. It's definitely not something you should be doing for a mission critical operation. Information like that should really always be sent by email, with a, you know kind of a text reminder is the best way. But the effectiveness of it is really really good when it does go. So it's definitely something you you want to use when it's appropriate because the, uh, the pluses of it are just worth doing. It's, it, but it is one of those things where uh, you just can't think of it as you know anything that's going to be a hundred percent and that you can you know you don't want to throw everything uh, on it there. Uh, so you can do it as an autoresponder or a broadcast. Uh, each message will have its own reference name and you just pick the file exactly like we just did with the voice screen. And I'm going to go ahead and demo that right now as well. So if I went into my same campaign and I go to my autoresponders, and I'm just going to go over here to the toolbar on the right side, 
and I'm going to add a new voicemail. Like all of our autoresponders, you have choices as to when it goes out. You can send it in conjunction with a subscriber time or an event time, birthdays and anniversaries as well. Um, I'm going to send this one later after subscribed, which would be pretty typical. Maybe, uh, maybe this was a trade show or a meeting, and I'm going to send it, you know, about a half an hour after somebody subscribes, you know, or maybe even maybe even an hour. There. I'll send it one hour. That would usually give me enough time to have the meeting, and then, you know, if we part ways, they would get a message from me. I'm going to send it definitely to everyone. Uh, right now, the media manager will show you which one is uh, it's using as a default. Again, you can choose from any of the, any of the other audio files that you have. Uh, I could use the keep in touch one here. We've got a lot of the same options. Uh, right here does show where the it shows the phone number that you can use to call in uh, when you are calling in a. A voice file, the PIN number is 1010, and then you're going to have to give your account ID after that. Uh, and then that, this, you know, I can't really, I don't really recommend that you do this inside of the campaign. Uh, I definitely consider it best practice to do this inside your media files so that the file goes in, gets rendered, is ready, so that when you come here, literally you can just choose it. But if it is, uh, if you are in a pinch and you've got a really good internet connection and can, uh, you know, trust just a refresh, you can absolutely do it right from here as well. It's a recorder is available from here. And again, you can also email it directly to the campaign. Now the email in this case, if you see is a little bit different, this has your account ID, but it also has your campaign ID. So in this case, it shows you a little different way to do it. You can actually send the file directly to a campaign rather than to your account. Um, I would say best practice is to send it just to your account, so media dash, your campaign ID, at instantcustomer.com. Simply that way it will be available in all campaigns. If you do use something like this, um, you'll be able to see it in your media files, but you would not be able, that file would not be available on the drop down for other campaigns. So you can do it. Um, in a lot of cases, I think that would be easier. In other cases, if you, know, if you want that file to be available in other campaigns, then definitely just stick with uh, the first part of this. Uh, so I'm just going to set my file. And I'm just going to save this message right there. Our responder is saved successfully. And that would be completely ready to go. So pretty simple. They both work pretty much the same way in recording and in uploading. I'm going to go ahead and go through a couple of known issues with those and then uh, take some other questions there because that is definitely a, uh, a tricky technology. So here's some of the common issues with voice. Di your dial-in message isn't playing. So you call into your campaign and the message doesn't play. You've checked out the file. You've, you, know, you can go into your campaign and you can trigger it. You can hear it. It works fine. Really the only reason that your message is not playing uh, would be there's something wrong with the phone number. Either your campaign is out of points and it's just kind of shut down. Maybe your auto recharge is off. Uh, that'll shut it down as well. Uh, could be that somehow you've copied a campaign and the number got assigned to more than one campaign. Um, you know, that's definitely going to cause problems because the system doesn't know uh, which campaign to access. So a lot of times you would need to use the campaign ID as a PIN number in that case. Um, but otherwise, if the file is playing and, uh, you know, when you're inside, when you're testing it, but it's not playing when you call in. That is, that's typically a campaign, you know, the campaign is uh, shut down for some reason. It, would all, it should also do that if you have the campaign paused at all. Uh, the direct to voicemail uh, rings the phone. Now this is, a tr like I said, this technology is pretty tricky. 
Um, you know, generally what happens, and this is kind of carrier specific here, different carriers handle this whole process uh, differently, but typically the system kind of pings the phone to check the number, to kind of check that it's a cell phone, and then after it gets a successful ping there, it sends the voicemail message directly to the inbox. It actually accesses the carrier itself and goes straight to the inbox. It does not leave the message like directly on the phone. It's uh, an interesting kind of process there. So that is a, uh, actually a very typical uh, thing that's kind of supposed to happen there. Now the direct to voicemail not received is definitely a big, or I wouldn't say it's a big issue, but it's probably the, the biggest issue that we do get. The de deliverability on these is, you know, in the 85 plus percent range, but with as many as we do, that's, uh, you know, that's still, you know, a decent number. So if the direct voicemail is not received, typically that's because a number's been ported. And by ported, I mean taken from one carrier and moved to another. So, you know, if you were with Sprint and you had that number moved over to AT&T, the way this kind of technology works is it, it actually is checking that number in a database. And if that database still had you as a Sprint customer, it's going to send the wrong instructions and it's not going to go in. So typically, if your phone number has been ported from one carrier to another, that that may not work for a long time, depending on when that database is uh, updated. Um, now there are some. Let's see what she's got here. Uh, also, the direct to voicemail may be slightly cut off or maybe blank. Now. The previous one with the not received kind of can come in with this cutoff or blank with some Verizon phones in different parts of the country. It's, it's an issue that we constantly work on. Um, Verizon seems to be a company that changes their stuff way more often than everybody else. And it's, you know, it's just a constant fight to keep up with them. Some best practices that can kind of help with that are recording messages that are really clear and consistent and you know have a decent volume to them. Uh, it seems to be that with Verizon if there's some you know if there's too much modulation or if it gets too quiet um, it cuts it off or delays it or you know who knows exactly what they're doing behind the scenes there. But uh, again it is something we constantly work on and is something that you know I think you can help out with uh, you know if you use if you definitely use a recording program I know that Jean uses when she uses Audacity she definitely modulates her voice so that it's, it's more even she kind of has a you know big rise and fall in her enunciation so she kind of modulates that down to make it more consistent and at the same time gets it at a volume that is you know also consistent but strong so she definitely has had more success with that, uh, you know, than with just calling it in or with, uh, you know, recording it on a uh, in a different way and, and not going through some sort of processing there before doing it. But you know, I I wish I had uh, better uh, directions that could make that, uh, you know, closer to 100 percent. But there's uh, you know, a lot of that just has to be just kind of caught up with uh, programming as best we can there. Okay, I'm actually going to go and see if there's any other questions on that because it does seem to be a, uh, a big one there. Uh, one of the things, uh, the direct -to voicemail is a U.S. only service. Uh, it is carrier specific, so uh, you know, that's the, been the only ones we've been able to um, program that out with. So if you're in Canada or if you're an international, it's one of those things that we hope we get to uh, as soon as possible. But for right now, that it, uh, the direct to voicemail is U.S. only. Otherwise, I mean, do have a question from Daniel that yes, instant customer is definitely working in Canada. We did add a second provider, so for the for the call in, Canada at least now does have the exact same phone number to text or call in, which is a really nice feature. Working on that for the UK next, um, 
It is a big advantage. It is something that we hope to do in every single country that we support, uh, you know, in, in due time there. Okay, Claude is also saying, uh, yeah, if you want to, if you, yeah, just really your best bet for Audacity is just to Google it, but uh, I do, uh, Claude is saying that um, there is a beta version for the Mac. Um, actually, if you're using Windows Vista 7, you would need to use the beta version as well. So there are two, there is two versions of Audacity and that beta version, which I've used and it's fine. Uh, you, that's that's the version you would use there, and that is a SourceForge.net um, site. If you go to Audacity.com, that's not something completely different there. Okay, no other questions specifically about that. So hopefully, uh, covered some of those known issues there. Uh, so today's summary is: use voice messages as another way to connect with your customers and prospects. Well, I think that's a tremendous way to put it. Um, I've, like I said, I've seen Mike do this, and that kind of connection is really, really strong hearing somebody's voice that really is. So, I mean, I think it's really, really important, especially on the direct -to voicemails, that you record those in a conversational, colloquial, use your own language. Gene said it, you know, act like you're talking to your best friend. Act, you know, I, I would say, really make those heartfelt and your response from those will be really, really, I think they'll kind of blow you away. Use direct to voice messages to incur immediate action. Boy, I think in both, not only the direct to voicemail, but in the incoming, the whole point is, is action takers. The whole point of our system is to encourage and point out the action takers. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, on the incoming voice greeting, your whole, you I mean, you really have a mission there. The mission is to get them to press two and leave their name and email, or if you're using the forwarding, to press one to talk to somebody directly. I mean, that's one. That's really for the for the uh, call in messages. That's how I do it. Typically, I'll say, you know, if you're ready to get started and if you want to talk to me directly, press one. That uses the forwarding. We'll go through that on another one, but that's. Um, you know, you can have your incoming voice greeting set up to forward to a cell phone or to a, you know anything that you can uh, verify there. And then, you know, to get my report, press two, leave your name and email. So I'm taking care of the, you know, the hot leads right off the bat. I'm taking care of the uh, the warm leads, and then I figure all I got left are my cold leads. So I'm gonna my whole message then, whether it's one minute or ten, is to you know, get that to build that heat up for them to take action. If they call your number and don't either talk to you directly or press two and leave their information, that is totally failed. That is not what you're looking for. You're looking to convert those. I mean, they they obviously thought your initial instruction was at least interesting enough to call you. So that you know, you got to close them to get on your list right there. Uh, then the whole point is to use the other parts of the system to continue to connect with them and give them buy opportunities and uh, you know turn them from prospects into clients. Um, the direct to voicemail, uh, like Gene's saying here, uh, a lot of times uh, we use that uh, for immediate action things. You know, hey, this is Mike. Um, hey, I just talked to you. If you, uh, you know, I can give you a special deal on this if you you know, call me back at this number right now or something like that. So those kind of action taking points, that kind of immediacy, that kind of connection, really powerful, uh, you know, I really encourage that you use it, you know, as much as possible. Uh, clean, crisp sound works best, and again, this goes to two different things. You do want to try to record it like that because you're going to have your best chance of getting that through to more carriers. Uh, at the same time, you know, on the other end, when you're listening to them, um, you know, don't expect them to be stereo quality. They're just not going to come out like that. It's going through a phone system, and it's going through, you know, somebody else's connection, and it's going to the carrier's inbox. People are accessing it on all kind of different phones and all kind of different 3Gs and 2Gs and stuff that works and antennas that are too far away. So don't, you know, don't obsess about the quality on the back end but definitely at least try to keep them clean and consistent 
especially for the director voicemail, at least it gives you a better chance. And again, you know, we're constantly working on getting uh, the de deliverability on those as best we can. So, uh, of course, our uh, instant customer webinar mantras are the formula success never changes on this slide. Great messages engage people and keep them wanting more. Uh, give to get is where this you know really comes in. Uh, use your own voice. You know, trust that people are contacting you because they like what they're hearing from you. Uh, they like the information you're given, and keep them wanting more and keep those buy opportunities coming. Uh, so you, you know, the whole point is to get clients. That's that's what we're here for. All right, this week's special offers for those of you who are not satisfied just with the outstanding value that Instant Customer brings. Cross Channel Mojo, is, I think, just kind of reopened. So uh, you can get that at www.crosschannelmojo.com slash web. Now, Cross Channel Mojo is a comprehensive mentoring and uh, mentoring, uh, mentoring program that uses the best campaigns, the most successful real-life campaigns of instant customer users over the last year. It's an 18-week program that consists of uh, nine modules that are, again, focused on a specific uh, area, like maybe, like one was on trade shows, one, uh, Jean, uh, who's on our webcast today, she has one called the Grand Opener, which uh, she focuses on a grand opening campaign she did for a restaurant. So they give you a whole week of training on that and then a, a week of office hours of call-in and Q&A with the person that actually made that program. So if you're looking for real-life examples and real-life mentors, that is a tremendous, tremendous place to go. Uh, if you are interested in not only Instant Customer, which gives you uh, a way to take your leads and convert them into clients, but if you need help with leads, uh, Trafficizer is they, they that's what they do. So they use video marketing and blog marketing and social media marketing to get the leads to your page. So you can get those opt-ins, build your list, and then uh, you know communicate with that list and give the buyer opportunities. Trafficizer you can get at trafficizer.com/slash 21 days/slash web. That's for a 21 day trial. Uh, to get both together, if you don't have either one and you want a combination of Traffic Geyser and Monster Follow Up to do, or uh, Instant Customer to do what I just said, you know, not only generate leads but get them, build the list, and market to the list, that's Main Street Marketing Machines 2.0 Fusion. You can get that at www.mainstreetmarketingmachines.com slash web. Uh, next week we're going to cover uh, what was a tip from last week. Uh, SM and short code keywords. Uh, we did just a tip on that and we got about 100 questions so we decided to do an entire broadcast just on SMS and short code keywords. We're going to cover technical best practices, how to drive people into your campaigns with them, and then US versus international questions. We'll be handling both um, SMS long code and short code keyword best practices and your questions. So I definitely do, I'm going to check the questions one more time here. Okay, so again, um, Audacity is a program that, it's a free program that you can use to record sound files. That's all it does. It is, you know, for, for me, it has uh, a lot of features that are advanced, but on a very basic level, you can just record your file and go. So of the, of the free ones, that is definitely uh, the one that I recommend. If you have any questions, if you've gotten uh, any one of those offers that I've shown at a different price, definitely contact Billing or Support. Um, if you if you need to, uh, you know, check out different pricing that you've seen that come up afterward. That's a def that is a definitely a support issue, not something that I can uh, cover here for sure.
David's asking about voicemail in Australia. And again, um, I'm going to I want to make a distinction about what our voicemail is and is not. Um, our direct to voicemail does not call the phone directly and leave a message. Again, um, it pings the phone just to get kind of a, uh, a response to whether that number is still live or not, but then it calls the carrier directly and leaves the message there. Now that's that's a technology that is um, very tricky to do, just to, to say the least. So to say, you know, that a certain country, uh, of course, I mean, every, I mean, there's literally a hundred or more carriers uh, internationally that we deal with on a daily basis. Um, you know, building out a solution like that for every single one of them is a daunting task. Like I said, uh, we'll do, we'll try to do that as best we can to find partners to do that. But it is definitely not just uh, it's not just as easy as knowing that somebody's got voicemail and just hooking it up. It's, it doesn't it just doesn't work like that. Uh, and again, so right now, that you know that is only available in the United States. Okay, I think that's about all we can get to today. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, again, next week we'll be handling SMS and short code keywords. We should be we should be back on our Tuesday schedule uh, next week. So once again, thank you for coming, and we will see you next Tuesday.